Hey, Von Shun here. If you watched my upcoming Winter 2018 anime video in which I go over pretty much all the anime series, then the synopsis of the stories mentioned in this video might be repeated, but I'll cut it shorter than usual just to give my take on it, and even more so for sequels because chances are you probably already know them. But this will be the top 10 anime series from Winter 2018 as voted by Japanese fans through a survey from a service called Ebi Express. It consists of around 15,000 people from 47 different prefectures within Japan. So with that out of the way, let's get started. Starting off at number 10, Kore wa Amegari no Yoni, or translated as After the Rain. Not a direct translation, but it's an alright title. It is a seinen romance story that is both an interesting and unique series from what we usually see. It has a slightly serious and melancholic undertone, but yet it tends to be lighthearted whenever it can. Honestly, when I first saw the manager in the previews, I thought he was the overly serious cool type of character. But I was wrong. So far initially for a romance it has little to no drama and just progresses in a steady manner. Although it isn't something to be overly excited for, it is an interesting love story that tackles aspects of social expectations and possibilities regarding relationships. Visually it's very different as well as expected from Wood Studio. I don't know, their animation always looks indescribably weird to me, in a good way. In this series, there's a lot of over-exaggerated, as I call it, sparkly scenes whenever Tachibana gets love struck, which is pretty much all the time. But most importantly, it gets to the point. I also very much love the ending song, Refrain which was sung by Eme, one of my all-time favorite singers, my favorite song from the whole season honestly if I had to choose. But if you enjoy romance series, this is something to really consider, and really not surprising at all that it made it to the top 10 spot for Japanese fans. And number 9, Karakai Jozu no Takagi-san or Skill Teaser Takagi-san is a super carefree slice of life romantic comedy series. I will have to say that there isn't really much to say about it other than watching two middle schoolers who obviously have a crush on each other tease each other, albeit in a one-sided manner for the teasing part. It's a completely pure and easygoing show when you really don't want to think about anything. In the end, it's a collection of events of them teasing each other back and forth and it always ends the same way with them flirting with each other. And number 8, Fate Extra, Last Encore, is a series that takes place in a parallel universe to Fate Stay Night. It's not really a spin-off because they say all the different iterations of the Fate series takes place in the same universe and are connected, but that's a topic for another video. Going back to Fate Extra, I'll be honest, I had no idea what was going on when I watched this, and I know some people that also played the Fate Extra game and still have no idea what's going on in an anime series, so you can already tell where the series is heading towards. Of course, this is by Shaft, so I expected the story to be presented weirdly, but I was just so lost throughout the first few episodes. The synopsis is about a boy named Takishinami Hakuno, who wakes up in a virtual world with no memory of his past. He ends up finding himself fighting in a war he knows nothing about for the Holy Grail. If you know some of the other iterations of the Fate series, you probably know what this is already about. He has by his side a strange servant belonging to the Saber Claws. This Saber is Red Saber and she is a Saber Face character or Saber Cowl, which literally means Saber Face. Just to briefly explain, a Saber Face character is a character that looks very similar to the original Saber, Arturia Pendragon or King Arthur. There's like over 20 Saber Face characters like Mysterious Heron X or Okita Soji, but I'll spare you the rest. Just for the sake of those watching anime series, I'll leave the true identity for this Saber for you to find out, but if you played Grand Order or you played some of the other games, you probably already know who this is. But yeah, honestly, I don't know what's happening. They're in a digital world. It's a trial. They have to kill each other. They're in a matrix and they can summon servants. I don't know. It's um, it's a very enigmatic show. At number 7, Overlord 2. Pretty much what you expect from the second season as it follows up from the first season. One of the better isekai series out there and not surprised why this would be at number 7. Obviously, you definitely shouldn't pick this up unless you watch the first season, but it definitely has the potential to top the first with more development for the supporting characters of the various story arcs. At number 6, Ramen Daisuke Koizumi-san is a slice of life series by a beautiful and attractive high school student named Koizumi, who from first glance is mysterious and cool. We later find out that she is an enormous enthusiast of ramen with an intense appetite, so much so that every day she goes out looking for real life ramen shops to eat at. I'm not entirely sure about this, but a lot of ramen shops in the series are actual real life ramen places you can go to in Japan, such as the pineapple ramen shop called Papa Papine in Tokyo. Now from the towel and just by looking at it, you can assume it's just about girls eating ramen. And that's exactly what it is, the whole thing. I myself love ramen, like I really like ramen, like really. If I had the money, I would go out to eat it every day honestly, so this show really appealed to me personally. Moreover, for those of you not too familiar with ramen, this show through Koizumi-san educates you a little about the many different types of ramen out there and the intricacies that go into the makings of them from convenience store ramen to homemade ramen and of course to the notoriously delicious known restaurant style ramen. This show is just literally everything about ramen and most importantly of course, I really like the jingle. <laughs> Number 5, Dagashi Kashi 2 follows from the first season that aired in 2016. Unfortunately, this time around the episodes will only be half as long, being only 12 minutes per episode. The animation studio has also been changed from Feel to Tezuka Productions, so the art style will look different as well, but Feel will still be credited for doing the setting cooperation. Voice and sound will still be the same, but various other aspects will have a change in staff. Overall, it is still a fun watch for those who have enjoyed the first season and love snacks. Number 4, Yawamushi Petal Glory Line is the fourth season of the series. 
perfect spot number four too since it is the fourth season. Picking up from New Generation, the fourth season jumps you right into the story without any character introductions or much reference to what happened before, except the short recap from New Generation. In short, it's really for fans who've been waiting for more Yamamushi Pedal, but probably not a series to pick up if you're a new viewer. If you're kinda interested, you probably have to watch the first three seasons first. Number 3, Sekikusa no Sign On 2 is the second season of the first season. This time they will be 24 minute 4 episodes instead of the shorter 5 minute episodes from the first season. It is pretty much what you would expect compared to the first season, as the comedy is still there and the characters are still being themselves. If you like the shorter format of the first season, you'll probably like this season even better with the longer episodes. At number 2, Card Captor Sakura Clear Card Hand or Clear Card Arc. A series that many people have been waiting for, personally I think it's the nostalgia that has really gotten this series the attention it deserves, but the series has returned with beautiful visuals we got a glimpse of from the prologue during last year in September. Shaoran returned and the reunion was just heartwarming. Almost everything picked up from what was left off in the original series and the movies, with the addition of stunning improved presentation and visual animation. Sadly, a few characters and voice actors will be left out, but not forgotten. I'm sure you fans out there know who they are. Other than that, it is a great show to watch that will bring back all the sentiments from the original and even more to come as it progresses. And of course, number one, lastly, it would be the new season of Nanatsu no Taizai or The Seven Deadly Sins we've been waiting three years for, entitled Nanatsu no Taizai Imishimen of Cuts, or The Seven Deadly Sins Revival of the Commandments, which will be a direct sequel from the first season. In this season, we continue the story of Elizabeth, Meliodas, and the rest of The Seven Deadly Sins, introducing new allies and new enemies, as the title hints. The backstories of certain characters such as Elizabeth and Meliodas will be expanded, and of course, the battles will be even more action-packed than before. It's no surprise that this came out at number one, as it is also my most anticipated series from winter as well. Once again, this was the top 10 Winter 2018 anime series as voted by Japanese fans. You might have been surprised that some series like Violet Evergarden or Darling in the Franks weren't on this list, which just shows an interesting difference in the taste between these group of Japanese people compared to other anticipations from outside countries. Would you be even more surprised to hear that Darling in the Franks wasn't even in the top 20? But yeah, it actually, it actually wasn't. So what did you guys think of this list? Would you agree or disagree? Or rather, what would your list look like? Feel free to leave a comment below. I'm interested in hearing what you guys have to say. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.